Your brother was very fond of them. In fact, he planned to free them when they come of age. But now the lawyer plans to sell them as soon as the estate is settled. William was right. They will be freed. If I and I quit the slave trade, I'd never see another human boat or soul. Are they a family? No, sir. I'll give them a name. From now on, they'll be Cato and Scipio Jones. I'm a sea captain. Went to sea when I was not much older than you lads. If I get a ship again, would you like to go float? Yes, sir. Boys, your meal's been waiting this past five minutes. And this is Duncan McBean, sir. He's been working for your brother for the past five years. Uh, Scott, if I'm not mistaken. I am proud of it. What kind of work did you do for my brother? Oh, a bit of helping with everything, including a little piping on Saturday nights and celebration days. Uh, it's a long time since I've heard the pipes. You'll have to play me a tune as soon as you've finished your meal and I've concluded my business with Mr. Woolley. It'll be a pleasure, sir. Come on, boys. You mentioned something about another ship, Captain? If I may say so, you've come into a very fair estate. As Master William's accountant, I should say you'd be able to purchase your own ship, should you be wanting one. The first thing I'll need will be a good lawyer who will clear up my inheritance without a storm of questions. Can you name me one? Uh, there's Patrick Henry. He's the best lawyer in Virginia, though a bit free with words for some. Do you take an interest in politics, Captain? Your brother did. So I see. Common sense, the American crisis, Patrick Henry's speeches. Where can I find this Patrick Henry? Oh, mostly at the House of Burgesses. I'll be glad to guide you there. Is life so dear, peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me. Liberty or give me death. As you say, he's a bit free with words. He's still at large after writing this. He must be a good lawyer. I thank you for the compliment, sir. Patrick Henry at your service. I am William Paul's brother, John Paul Jones. Jones? Yes, it's a long story. I'd like to talk to you, if I may, in private. Well, perhaps we'd better go to my house. You're very kind, sir. I'll be back in a few hours, Mr. Woolley. It's good luck for you indeed that you happen to be in Fredericksburg tonight. Why, sir? Because I'll be able to show you some Virginia hospitality at its best. I hope you'll come as my guest to the levy of the House of Burgesses. I'd be delighted. Mr. Woolley? Tom, you've had enough. Well, why not? They went dancements. Some of your colleagues, Captain. One of His Majesty's ships of the line. Ladies and gentlemen of Virginia. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now midnight, and as the dawn approaches, may I ask you to charge your glasses and raise them to something else that is dawning on our fair shores. I give you liberty. Treason. But only words. Colonial courage.
is no better than the virtue of colonial women. You prepared to answer for this? Hold your tongue, sir. Now, help me get him out of here. He's in no condition to act for himself. If any of his friends care to wait on me. Didn't care for the remark myself, but Parker is a shipmate of mine. Load struck. Perhaps he'll oblige me. Jones, sir. John Paul Jones. There are many Jones, sir. But Lieutenant Parker holds the King's commission. Sir, I'll vouch for Mr. Jones' quality, and I didn't care for the remark either. Gentlemen. Gentlemen, we can't have this. Mr. Henry, you persuade your young friend to haul his wind. I'll guarantee the behavior of my officers. But, sir. Silence, sir. Come to attention, both of you. I'll meet you at the door after making my apologies. For apologies are warranted. But a blow was struck, sir. My orders! Excuse me. Congratulations, Captain. Very well done, sir. My congratulations, too, sir. Mine, too, sir. Glass of wine, Jeff. After this dance. Dorothea, I want you to meet the hero of the evening, Captain John Paul Jones, Miss Standish. Will Miss Standish permit me the honor of this dance? I'm afraid that I already... Well, it was to have been mine, but under the circumstances, I gladly forfeit. Suppose a mariner can name all the stars. Part of the trade, ma'am. From Baltic latitudes to south of the equator, from this continent to the shores of India, I've seen all the constellations. And I swear I've never seen any so bright. So as I look into it this moment. I heard you were a buccaneer captain. Perhaps even a pirate. Now I find you playing at words like a poet. Whose art, they tell me, rests mainly on inspiration. Captain, at sea, sudden and swift attack might be considered the best of strategy. But with me, I can assure you it is not so. Captain Jones. It's just what I said, sir. 
a sizable sum. Is it enough to buy a new ship, sir? Perhaps. But I'm not in the market for a ship. What, sir? Uh, yesterday you Yesterday said... was yesterday. Willie, I'm swallowing the anchor. I don't quite comprehend, sir. Giving up the sea and to settle on the land, buy a nice farm and become a respected and respectable member of the community. I think I'm making a mistake in founding a home for myself. Oh, no, it's not quite that, sir. It's just that Cato, Scipio, and Mr. McBean were looking forward to shipping with you. And begging your pardon, sir, so was I. Well, I'll make farmers of you instead. Meantime, I'm off to a meeting with Mr. Danders. I trouble to investigate your new friend, Patrick. Or even rumors of piracy. If it comes to rebellion, we may need some experienced pirates. Defense upon the sea should not rest with adventurers. This adventurer, sir, showed his medal last night. Captain Jones, sir. Delighted you accepted the invitation, John. Thank you. You met Mr. Danders last evening. I had the honor. Kind words are being said, sir, concerning your conduct. Will you sit down, please? Thank you. In striking that young fool, you actually struck a blow for freedom. I know Scott is a stranger to the cause of freedom, sir. And for that matter, most Englishmen. England is a nation that respects and adores freedom. The people of the American colonies are descendants of Englishmen. You're no stranger to the words of Burke. But unfortunately, Edmund Burke, although a member of Parliament, is not Prime Minister of England. I think you like direct speaking as well as we do. The resistance in the colonies is growing daily. And so I've noticed. We're not without experienced army officers, but there's a great need for trained sea fighters. If offered a commission in the Continental Navy, would you accept it? I didn't know there was a Continental Navy. In name only. But when the time comes, as it will, ships will be more easily found than capable sea officers. My roots are in Scotland. My home has been a deck. I have strong sympathy with any fight for freedom, but I didn't come to Virginia to seek an appointment. Why did you come? To escape a jail cell, sir. Does that answer enough for you? Any court will clear. Only a crown court can try me. If I join you now, I'll add treason to the charge of murder. Gentlemen, I'm with you in spirit and sympathy, but so far there is no war. Besides that, I've come to a decision that would prevent me from accepting your offer. What is that, sir? I spent most of my life on the sea. Now I plan to spend my days like you gentlemen. A home in Virginia, broad green acres of my own. So, with the help of my brother's legacy, I'll forget the troubles of a shipmaster and enjoy making a living on my own land. All mine now. But like Mr. McBean, I hope you won't be haunted by a hankering for the sea. Hankering for cold winds and bad weather when I have all this? <laughs> Don't be insane, man. Come, let's put our whistles to a life of calm contemplation and poetic ease. <laughs> 